Mr. O here. Good morning. Hope you guys had a fabulous weekend and you guys got outside yesterday. What a beautiful day. All right. Your word today is ruminate. Go ahead, hit pause. You got this. You got this. All right. Ruminate. Part of speech. We got the word ruminate. We got the word ruminated, which tells us it must be a verb. Very good. Only part of speech that changes based on tense. Let's see if we can figure it out. Larry didn't have to blank about taking this guy as a roommate. He didn't have to maybe think about taking this guy. Let's plug that into a different sentence and see if it makes sense. Because she already made up her mind, Nancy did not need time to think when Pete asked her to marry him. Does that make sense? Exactly. So think, ruminate means to think or to ponder. Uh, basically to reflect. So that's what it means to ruminate. All right. My friends, we are going to take some notes. So our type of poem today is an epic. How epic. What an epic definition. All right, so an epic poem is a long poem, which usually celebrates the feats of a god or a legendary hero. Go ahead and hit pause and copy down that definition onto your notebook or whatever piece of paper you're on. So it's a long poem, and usually these poems celebrate gods or heroes. All right, and I have an uh, epic example, bro. Super epic. It's from the Odyssey. This is probably the most famous epic poem of all time. It's super long. We're talking thousands of pages. All right. And it's all about this guy named Odysseus. And he goes on this crazy journey trying to get home. And, of course, hijinks ensue. Like, I don't know, Cyclopses? Maybe Cyclops I? What? Think about that. Is the plural of Cyclopses Cyclops I? That would be crazy because they only have one eye. All right. Anywho, the Odyssey also includes other monsters. And it's a Greek uh, epic poem, so it involves some of our favorite Greek gods. So I'm going to read a little bit of this to you, and you're going to explain to me why and how we know this is an epic. Sing to me of the man, muse, the man of twists and turns, driven time and again off course. Once he had plundered the hallowed heights of Troy. Many cities of men he saw and learned their minds. Many pains he suffered, heartsick on the open sea fighting to save his life and bring his comrades home. Launch out his story, muse, daughter of Zeus. Start from where you will. Sing for our time, too. How do we know that this is an epic poem? So an epic poem is a really, really long poem, and this is just the beginning of this thousand, thousand-page poem. How else do we know that this is a epic? Well, it, it mentions Zeus, and in fact, it mentions the daughter of Zeus. Do you remember the name of the daughter of Zeus who was born out of his head? Goddess of wisdom and weaving, it is Athena. Very good, guys. So epics involve gods. I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mr. O, how is an epic different from a ballad? Hmm. Hmm. What an epic fight that was. So epics and ballads are similar. They are both story poems. So epics and ballads both tell stories, okay? But the big difference between the two is an epic is much longer. Ballads are usually shorter. Epics usually involve gods and heroes and monsters, okay? Whereas a ballad is usually about normal things. Most ballads are songs. Uh, I'm thinking off the top of my head, one of my most favorite ballads of all times, which is, uh, I should just sing it, shouldn't I? Romeo, take me somewhere we can be alone. I'll be waiting. All that's left to do is run. You'll be the prince and I'll be the princess. It's a love story, baby. Just say yes. Oh, oh. Anywho, uh, 
there is a type of song which is called a love ballad, right? So a ballad is usually set to song, but all a ballad is is a poem that tells a story. Whereas an epic tells a story, but it's a long, long, long story, and it's about gods and monsters and heroes, right? Like the Greek gods. Okay? So let's move on. So I want you to quiz yourself. Go ahead and write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on your paper and quiz yourself. Try not to look at your notes. See if you can identify these types of poems. Number one. Mother dear, may I go downtown instead of out to play and march the street of Birmingham in a freedom march today? No, baby, no, you may not go, for the dogs are fierce and wild, and clubs and hoses, guns and jails ain't good for a little child. But mother, I won't go alone, other children will go with me, and march the streets of Birmingham to make our country free. No, baby, no, you may not go, for I fear those guns will fire, but you may go to church instead and sing in the children's choir. And I'm going to skip down to the bottom. For when she heard the explosion, her eyes grew wet and wild. She raced through the streets of Birmingham, calling out for her child. She clawed through the bits of glass and brick, then lifted out a shoe. Oh, here's the shoe my baby wore, but baby, where were you? Where are you? This is a poem that tells a true story. This is about the church bombing that took place in Birmingham in the 60s. And a couple uh, children actually lost their lives in this bombing. And it was a horrible time. It was the time of segregation where people weren't being treated equally based on the color of their skin. So ask yourself, what type of a poem would this be? It's a poem that tells a story. Let's move on to number two. Basketball! You rule my world, you make my day. Oh, one object of my life, basketball. Oh, you are always on my mind when I'm in the gym. I want to be with you. When it's late and I should be asleep, all I can do is think of you. Basketball, with your dark black creases and your bright orange crust. Oh, I'll dance to the music you make, the sound of your swish, the rhythm of your dribble. Basketball. Oh, I'll drive, I'll hustle, I'll sprint just for you. I'm going to stop there because I think you can already tell what type of poem this is. Number two. Number three, warm soup in a bowl, letters of the alphabet, hang on the teaspoon. Ha, huh, what an image that one is. Uh, if you need more time, hit pause. Number four, uh, where does this poem start? Uh, wait, oh, there it is. The puffer jumps out of water, swimming slowly into thin air, swishing its invisible tail, spiny with its venomous bite. Ooh, a puffer fish poem. Number five. Long before anyone else, the prince Telemachus now caught sight of Athena, for he too was sitting here, unhappy among the suitors, a boy dreaming of clay. I'm going to stop there because you can already tell what kind of poem this is because, <coughs> cough, cough, Athena, cough, Monday. Maybe this day is not one of your favorites, but never forget that every day you wake up is an amazing gift and it's up to you to make it count. Happy Monday, my dudes. Number seven. There once were two cats from Kilkenny. Each thought that one cat too many. So they started to fight, to scratch, and to bite. Now instead of two cats, there aren't any. Ooh -hoo -hoo. You can kind of hear the song in that one. Number eight. Oh, sweet ice cream. You are my one true love. Thick and creamy and luscious. You should have surely been sent from heaven above. Ice cream, sweet ice cream. I turn to you no matter the season, spring, summer, fall, and even when the weather is a freezing. Very nice. So let's start with this number, this uh, first poem, number eight. This poem looks like it's a, it sounds like it's a love poem written to ice cream. We call that an ode. Number seven, <laughs> rhyme scheme, A-A-B-B-A, -B -B -A. long, long, short, short, long, and that song-like sound it's a limerick number six if you look across you see the word monday it's all about mondays and that makes it an acrostic this poem is a story this is again from the odyssey and it mentions the goddess of wisdom and weaving athena which makes it an epic epic poems are long and they are about gods and goddesses and heroes number four this poem looks like a concrete image. It's a poem about a puffer fish, and it looks like a fish. Number three, five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables, makes this a haiku. Number two, 
this is a poem written directly to a basketball. Like the poet is like talking to a basketball. That is a worship poem of an object. We call that an ode number one. This story tells a, or sorry, this poem tells a story, right? This is a real life story about the bombing in Birmingham. I believe it was 1962. But anywho, that makes this a ballad because it's a story poem. Very good. So hopefully you got all those. Here's your assignment, and it is due on Wednesday at the beginning of class. I want you to make note cards. You're going to make 12 note cards. Okay. Now, there are nine. You can see the first nine are one color. Those are all uh, terms that you already know terms that I had you copy down. So I want you to make those note cards. For number 10, 11, and 12, you do not have those definitions yet. So all I want you to do is make a note card with the word meter and elegy and sonnet on it. And then on uh, Wednesday and Friday, we'll add the definitions because we're going to learn those two on Wednesday and Friday. All right. So one way that you can do this, if you have note cards, go ahead and use them, obviously. If you don't have note cards, what you can do is you can take your uh, paper, fold it in half, and then cut down the middle, and then cut it one, two, three, four, five times, and then you'll have two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, wow, math, 12 separate note cards. So you don't need note cards. You can use just a regular piece of paper. So on one side, you'll put the word like stanza. And then on the other side, when you flip it over, you'll write the definition. A group of lines in a poem, aka a poem paragraph. All right. So all 12 of these terms will be listed on Google Classroom. Uh, you do not need to turn anything in. Okay. So this is the honor system. Uh, I encourage you to make these note cards. Uh, because that's what that's a great way to memorize something. Um, you will memorize them if you write them out. Think about this. The more muscles that you use when you are trying to remember something, the more you're going to remember it. Not only are you looking at a definition, right? You're actually writing it down. The letters are moving from your brain all the way through your fingers to your pencil onto a piece of paper. Think about all those millions of cells that are involved. When you involve your whole body into memorizing, that's just, I mean, that's how you memorize better. That's one of the awesome techniques, right? That's why when we did Greek mythology, we always act out the different gods and goddesses and what they're the god and goddess of, right? The more your body you involve, the better. So anywho, I encourage you to make those note cards. And again, you don't need to turn anything in. And those last three, meter, elegy, and sonnet, write them down, but don't write a definition yet because you don't have a definition yet. I love you guys. Happy Monday. Hope you guys are doing well.